Max were here, he'd probably take this microphone and step away from the podium and work the whole room. Um, I had never uh, met Max before um, the beginning of this, his second semester at Columbia. I didn't run into him during his first semester, but he showed up in my Wednesday writer's teacher seminar. And um, the next day, I had a, another seminar on short prose forms. And there I see him walking into the room. And so, you know, that's like 50% of his um, program. We were going to be in my classes. And I, we hadn't exchanged any words, but I just looked at him and said, um, God, I've missed you so much. <laughs> and, and I thought, well, how many barriers, boundaries did I just cross? And yeah. Max did not skip a beat. He said, I tried to call you last night. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, this, it was just this complete total instant theatrical report. And then at some point in, in class that, that day, he sang. He just broke out in song. And I cannot remember why, but I think it just made the whole semester just speed up like about six weeks of, of, of report. And I, and I said to him after class, I made him promise at any time Things are really going badly for me that, that he should just sing. <laughs> and, but what I didn't take into account was with Max in the class, things were never going to go that badly because he'd always find something to do or say. Um, you know, the, the old cliche about you know, not knowing what it's like to walk in someone else's shoes. Um, but of course, Max's poetry makes us feel very close to being able to do that. But I can say, and I may be the only one to say, that I have walked in Max's shoes. Um, and what happened was I had this, um, still have this um, um, tailor-made leather jacket that I got in Florence. And, and Max just, he, you know, he lusted after it. He just <laughs> admired it. And, um, and you know, Max with the hugging, I think half of the hugs he gave me were so that he could touch the leather. <laughs> and so I, I just took it off and I said, here, you can wear it for the rest of the term on one condition, give me those shoes. <laughs> and he had this patchwork quilt of, of, of shoes. And, and, uh, and I said, but you know what? You can give it to me tomorrow. And, you know. and so right off the next day, um, I mean, I gave him the jacket. And, I, and the next day, you know, he has this little, little bag, little plastic bag, and the shoes are in it. And um, the other day, I, I went looking for, um, I knew that there, there were a couple of photographs that had been taken of Max wearing that jacket. So I, I looked for them on Facebook. And I had the experience of having to scroll through, you know, all the things, that, you know, photos of Max and just dozens and dozens of dozens until I, I finally found them. And, and that kept going. And I suggest that if you have, um, you know, uh, enough time and emotional um, reserve to do that, and you see Max's entire life, and it's not in chronological order, and it just jumps all over the place, and there are a lot of repeats, and it just was an um, enormously uh, wonderful experience. Um, there are a lot of people who um, can make you feel like you have a special relationship. Um, that's not the case with Max. You did have a special relationship. Um, you know, everybody in this room who, who knew Max, it's not like he made you feel special. You were special. You are special. And he was special. And at one point, I almost said to him, you know, because we had a, 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 lot, a lot of conversation, I almost said to him, oh, Max, I just have so much more to teach you. And, and I didn't say it partly because it just seemed a little too, too morbid, but the other reason was <laughs> it was bullshit, is he had so much more to teach me. Um, When the um, galleys from his book um, showed up, he asked me, um, I was taking a, a leave of absence from this Best American Poetry blog, where I'm kind of a regular thing. And, um, and um, he asked if, you know, when I come back to it, I would mention the book. And so I just, I came back that day. And, um, and I tried to write something about it. And um, I, I realized that um, I couldn't do any better than Max's words. So I wrote uh, this cento. Um, and so all the words that I'll 
be reading in this, in this poem. They're all Max's words from the book. And in mid-July, um, I got a text from him that he was, he, he could not put his, he couldn't find the, the sento and he needed me to email it to him immediately. I think the text came at three in the morning. And he said, um, just want you to know I read your sento all the time and I need to feel loved. And I'm going to read it now because we all need to feel Max's love. <coughs> Asento for Max Ritvo's Four in Reincarnations. Moving, joy, moving, I am given a reward. So passionately and imaginatively, though the images vary exhaustingly and troublingly, much more beautiful than either one of our voices your brain binds around mine, a gold gauze. This is how love works. Thou art me before I am myself. You have my thoughts faster than I can, even of the imagination sizzling on top of it. I will live in your small, ecstatic brain for the possession of our smallest sensations. This is purity, who brings a kind of relief in the middle of a blizzard. No one can speak the language you will rewrite. <laughs> 